Picture the scene. You're gathered around the Christmas tree on Christmas Day with your friends and family, and you're trading gifts which have been assigned through a secret Santa drawer. Hopefully you are familiar with the concept, but if you're not, here's a quick run through. You and all other participants, say there are six of you, write your names on pieces of paper and put them into a hat. You then pull names out of a hat, secretly, and it is your task to get an amazing gift for that person. However, this doesn't really work if anyone pulls their own name, so we want to ask, what is the probability of no one pulling their own name? It also doesn't work because it's not Christmas, so we're going to call it Secret Easter Bunny, where we all get each other various Easter eggs and eat too much chocolate. Before we begin, we are going to run over some underlying mathematical concepts. E is Euler's constant, which is equal to 2.718281. This is a special irrational number, popping up in lots of areas in mathematics. We can express e to the x as the sum from n equals zero to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. Proof omitted. Factorials. This is when we multiply the number n by every natural number below it. For example, five factorial equals five times four times three times two times one. Binomial coefficient. n choose r equals n factorial over r factorial times n minus r factorial. This is the number of ways to choose r items from a collection of n items without repetition or replacement. Inclusion exclusion principle. We have two sets, A and B, and we want to try and find the size of the union of both sets. If we added set A and set B, you can see that we have counted the intersection of the sets twice, so we must subtract this intersection so we only count it once. Now we are left with the union. Now considering three sets, A, B and C, we want to find the size of the union. Again, if we added the sets separately, this would count the intersection of each pair of sets twice, as well as the triple intersection three times. Now we need to subtract each pairwise intersection once to nullify the double counting as before mentioned. Now notice that with the subtraction of each pairwise intersection, we have subtracted the triple intersection three times, so we must add it back in once. This leaves us with the size of the union. For the general case, you can probably spot a pattern. This is given by the formula, the size of the union of the sets S1 up to Sn equals the sum of the size of the individual sets minus the size of all the double intersections plus the size of all the triple intersections all the way up to minus one to the power of n plus one times by the size of the intersection of all the sets. We will omit this proof, but you can prove it by induction if you're into that kind of thing. So what are the odds? First of all, we can see that the probability that no one draws their own name out is equal to the number of ways that no one draws their own name divided by the total number of ways to draw names. We also assume there are n people. We know that the total number of ways is n factorial, so this suffices to find the number of ways for no one to draw their own name. Say we listed our names like this. We are looking for the sets which are rearranged such that none of the names are in their original position like this, or this, or this or even this. This would be the total number of ways for people to draw their names, i.e. n factorial, minus the size of the union of all sets which have at least one person drawing themselves, which just leaves the sets where no one draws themselves. Now, this union can be found via the inclusion-exclusion principle. We are trying to calculate the size and number of intersections. These intersections are the number of ways which those who are not predetermined to draw their own name out can do so. Note, those who have not yet drawn can still draw their own names. Since k is the number of people who are predetermined to choose themselves, we need to know the number of ways you can choose k people from a set of n people. This is equal to n choose k from the definition of the binomial coefficient. Because k people have already drawn themselves, then n minus k people remain to draw out of the hat. This means there are n minus k factorial ways for them to do so. Combining these terms, we have n factorial minus n choose 1 multiplied by n minus 1 factorial plus n choose 2 multiplied by n minus 2 factorial all the way up to plus or minus n n choose n multiplied by n minus n factorial. We write n choose k as n factorial divided by n minus k factorial times k factorial. We can see that the n minus k factorials all cancel, so we are left with n factorial minus n factorial over 1 factorial plus n factorial over 2 factorial minus n factorial over 3 factorial all the way up to n over n factorial. This is the total number of ways in which no one draws themselves. We know that the probability that no one draws themselves is this divided by n factorial. Notice that the n factorials all cancel out, so we are left with 1 factorial minus 1 over 1 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial minus 1 over 3 factorial plus 
all the way up to minus 1 to the n over n factorial. Another way of saying this is the sum from i equals 0 to n of minus 1 to the i divided by i factorial. Remember from earlier that this is a particular version of Euler's constant, i.e. when x equals minus 1, so then this is e to the minus 1. Now, when we plug in n as 6, as given in our original problem, this sum is approximately equal to 0 0.36806. We can see that this is already very close to 1 over e. Now say we plug in 7, we get 0 0.36786. Plug in 8, we get 0 0.36788. Working backwards now, we can see that if we plug in n equals 5, we get 0 0.36667. n equals 4, we get 0 0.375. n equals 3, we get 0 0.3334. And n equals 2, we get 0 0.5. We can see that the probability converges really quickly to 1 over e. This means that for any group of friends, whether there are 6 of you, 20 of you, 1000 of you, we have the probability that no one draws their own name in Secret Easter Bunny of 1 over E will stay the same. Strange, right? E, despite being a weird number, appears everywhere, like literally everywhere. For instance, in other problems such as the Monty Hall problem, trigonometry, modelling nuclear decay, relating to complex numbers, finance, under your bed, in your dinner, okay, maybe not the last two, but the list of places where E appears goes on. So there you have it. E is cool and we all get to eat chocolate. Yum 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 yum. This was group 36, 2MI project, created by Alex, Jack, Rory, Tim, Joanna and Ed.